So we talked about morphology, we talked about thermal transitions. How does this now apply to the processing side of things? Let us talk about crystalline materials. We saw that crystalline materials have got a narrow processing range for the melt temperatures. For example, PBT is a polyester, polybutylene terphthalate. PBT can be processed from 480 degrees to 510 degrees. It's a small window of about 30 degrees. Because they've got a small window, we need to make sure that we use fast injection speeds to fill the mold. What is the definition of fast that we will be covering at one point in the class? Visualize that you have got a part that is 12 inches long. If you start injecting the plastic from one end, if the melt temperature is 510 and you start injecting the plastic really slow, by the time it reaches to the center of the mold, the plastic is going to cool off and now you're not going to be able to fill the rest of the mold. Therefore, what needs to happen in this case is that we need to inject the plastic at a rate such that the plastic is still molten till it reaches the end of fill. We need to inject the plastic at such a rate that even after injection, the plastic still stays molten till the end of fill. And therefore, injection speeds are relatively faster when it comes to crystalline materials. The mold temperatures, they must be maintained in the recommended range. We just talked in the previous slide how important mold temperatures are and how important crystallization temperatures are. And for that reason, we have to make sure that we maintain these mold temperatures so that the crystallites form and so that we don't have any inbuilt stresses inside the part. The heat stability for these materials is not very good. It's not very high. And therefore, these materials, they cannot have long residence times inside the barrel. Residence time is the amount of time that the plastic spends inside the barrel of the molding machine. So the longer it stays, the chances of degradation are higher. And therefore, we need to make sure in case of crystalline materials, the residence times are low. Barrel heats, sometimes they need what is called as a reverse profile. So what's a reverse profile? We will be discussing the injection molding screw in detail a little later. But for now, it's just enough to understand that the back zone of the molding screw is called as the feed section. In the feed section, the plastic is basically moving ahead. You do not want to melt the plastic in the feed section. The whole idea of the feed section is to make the plastic soft so that before it goes into the next zone, it is now ready for the melting to take place. In the feed section, you just need to give it enough heat such that the plastic starts to soften. However, in case of crystalline materials, what happens is the crystallites require a lot of energy to melt. They do not soften very easily. And so what is done is to soften them, you give it a boost of energy. And when you get a boost of energy, the crystallites soften. And when this crystallites soften, the whole plastic pellet is now soft and therefore it achieves its purpose in the feed zone. But we discussed that the residence time for these materials is not very good. And therefore, once you soften the crystallites, it's a good idea to drop the temperatures down a little so that you're not subjecting it to higher temperatures because higher temperatures will also accelerate the degradation. And therefore, this profile is called as a reverse profile. As a side note here, sometimes in case of amorphous materials too, one may hear a grinding sound as a screw is turning. Usually this happens near the feed throat area. This happens because the temperatures in the feed zone is usually low. Increasing the temperature will help eliminate this noise. Sometimes when the screws are pulled out for maintenance or for cleaning purposes, you may also notice that there's a lot of wear in the feed zones. Again, increasing the temperatures will help reduce this issue. What happens is that if the plastic is too hard, if it's not soft enough, as it goes through the feed zone, it, it starts to wear out all the flights in the feed zone. Screw rotation speeds when processing crystalline materials need to be on the higher side. 
The heat required to melt the plastic comes from two sources. The first one is the heater bands that are around the barrel and the second is from the rotating screw. Plastic itself is a bad conductor of heat and therefore the plastic near the surface of the screw melts because of the shear heat that is provided by the rotating screw. To define shear heat in simple words, shear heat is the frictional heat as the screw is turning and the plastic is being rubbed against it. The crystallites need a lot of heat or energy to melt and therefore the screw rotation speeds for crystalline materials must be fast enough to achieve the melt temperature and the melt homogeneity. In this picture here, it was found that there were unmelted particles in the part that caused the part to fail. Increasing the screw rotation speeds helped melt this plastic and eliminate this problem. Nozzle temperature control in case of crystalline materials is very critical in order to avoid freeze off or drool. In thermoplastic injection molding, we always say that the mold is cold since we compare that to the temperature of the melt. Even if the actual mold temperature is, let's say, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, as is in the case of PEIs, Ultem is a common trade name for a PEI, we say that the mold is cold since the temperature of the melt is about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So when the heated nozzle touches the mold, the tip of the nozzle tends to cool off and therefore the material in the nozzle tip also will cool off. In case of crystalline materials such as nylons, as soon as the temperature drops below a certain value, again in case of nylons that would be about 480 degrees Fahrenheit, the plastic freezes off immediately and does not allow the plastic injection during the next shot. On the other end, if the temperature is high, then what happens is that the plastic starts to drool very easily since crystalline materials have a very sharp melting point and once molten, they start to flow very easily. To avoid these extreme conditions, it's mandatory to control the temperature of the nozzle tip as precisely as possible. And therefore, placing the thermocouple closer to the tip provides better control and eliminates this problem. So, if you have got a nozzle body here and you have got your heater band here, you can place the thermocouple here or if it's possible here, it's too close to the mold, so it may not be possible. But the closer you place it towards the nozzle tip, the better your control is going to be. Every plastic has what is called as an ejection temperature, which when reached inside the mold, the part now has enough strength for it to be ejected out of the mold. Ejection temperatures in case of crystalline materials are usually higher than those for amorphous materials. This is because the crystals, they provide the strength to the plastic and as soon as they are formed, the parts can be ejected out of the mold. Therefore, cooling times for crystalline materials are shorter than that for amorphous materials. The same part molded out of a nylon can be ejected out of the mold much quicker than if it was molded out of, let's say, ABS. Of course, we do not consider dimensions, it's visuals only. Now let's look at amorphous materials. The processing range for amorphous materials is wide. For example, depending on the grade of ABS, the processing range for ABS is 400 degrees to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the plastic is processable anywhere in this range. Visualizing the same 12 inch part from the previous slide, if we inject a 500 degree Fahrenheit melt of ABS at a slower injection speed, then the chances are high that the plastic will reach the end of fill when the melt is still processable. So slower injection speeds are acceptable in case of amorphous materials. As discussed earlier, in case of amorphous materials and in case of crystalline materials, the mold temperatures are also important for the cosmetics of the part. However, in case of amorphous materials, although there is a recommended mold temperature range, for example, in case of ABS, it says 120 degrees to 160 degrees, 
although there is a mole temperature range that is recommended, deviating from this recommended mole temperatures is not going to be detrimental to the mechanical properties of the part. I have molded parts from ABS even at 65 degrees Fahrenheit with acceptable mechanical properties. These materials are much more heat stable, so they can have longer resistance times inside the barrel. They do not have crystallites in there, so you're not going to have issues with softening of the plastic in the feed zone and therefore you do not need any reverse profile, a regular profile is acceptable. Again, because there are no crystallites, high screw speeds are not required to melt the plastic. Nozzle temperature control is much easier. There's no freeze off or drool like we have in case of crystalline materials. And cooling times are usually longer because they do need some more time to set up because of the lack of crystallites. If you look at polyolefins, polyolefins are crystalline materials. Polyolefins are polyethylenes and polypropylenes. But unfortunately, polyolefins are exceptions to a lot of rules that we just talked about. To begin with, they are very heat stable and they can have long residence times. So if you do not purge polypropylene for 20 minutes or even 30 minutes or even leave it inside the barrel for a long time, they are not going to degrade at all. You have to be careful about the additives in there. Sometimes there are some colorants in there that can start to degrade and, and the plastic can start getting discolored. But polypropylene by itself or polyethylene by itself, they can have long residence times and they do not degrade very easily. They have a narrow melting range, but they are melt processable over a broad range of temperatures. It's okay to use chilled water or tar water. For example, the crystallization temperature for HDPE is 235 degrees Fahrenheit. So by what we just studied, we should be setting our mold temperatures at 235 degrees Fahrenheit. But we know that it's not practical to set the temperatures at 235 because if you set it that high, as the polypro is going to come out, it's going to be really flimsy, it's going to be really soft, it's not going to eject, you're going to have pin push issues, where you're going to have all these problems and therefore it's okay to use chilled water or tar water because these products that are typically made from these materials are really not used as high-tech products. They're usually the commodity products that are used by customers like containers for food and so on and so forth. They're not tight tolerance parts. Also, a lot of the crystallization that starts to happen, it, it can start happening outside the mold and therefore it is okay to be using chilled water or tar water for these products. Slow injection speeds are acceptable because they've got a broad range of processing temperatures and then cooling times are usually higher because they're very soft materials.